Yeah, and it is uh, just making sure that if there is a spirit that does slip through, of course, they ban not the storm, but if you do see maybe that void or storm, you are going to have a little bit of an answer. Actually, storm also banned. But uh, taking the Lena, I think, is a very good strat from Arkosh. We've seen Felt really flex that Lena muscle where uh, maybe Tay decides to take it, maybe they decide to flex it around just a bit. And it's one of the best heroes versus Luna where, again, if you step a little bit too far forward in your initial siege, Lena's one of the best heroes to just burst you before your team's even ready. And I like that they picked the Winter Wyvern because now that is the save. That is the hero that's going to break Arkosh's combo a little bit. And at the same time, now you have the line for the Ember Spirit, which it almost feels like that was a preemptive pickup. So, I mean, Felton pre-lobby chat, they were saying they were going to win the draft. They might not win the game, but I really like what they're kind of building up for them right now. Yeah, they're looking insanely dangerous at the moment, really. They've got some durable sort of heroes on the front line in the timber. They've got Lachnan. They've got teamfight strength. They have the means uh, to potentially keep heroes like the Ursa and the Ember Spirit sort of at arm's length if it comes down to it. So... An interesting maneuver by Felt, looking pretty strong right now. Obviously, still a question about where, or not where, but what they choose to send it to that middle lane. Looking now, uh, like it's pretty much a guaranteed matchup against that Ember Spirit. So, they at least know what they're going to be going up against. That might give them a bit of an advantage. But for now, uh, we do see the emphasis in that final phase of bands coming through onto the offlane position. The Tidehunter being taken away here early on. And well, meanwhile, on the Arkosh side, they're sort of keying in on... As we said before, some of those maybe less conventional mid heroes, Razor and Morphling, both being banned out there. And I can only imagine probably going to see a Mars ban coming from Felt, but yeah, I really like what they have. They've got the button, they've got the Cold Embrace, the strongest spell in Dota, more or less. Okay, versus Urza, it doesn't feel that great. You're going to have the Furious Wipe stacking up, but everything that Winter Wyvern accomplishes is just good versus the hero. And at the same time, right now, Arkosh, this is something that they don't really draft around a lot unless you get Pale Horse on uh, a tower hitter. They don't have great building damage. It would be amazing if Gremlo could uh, perhaps get on a hero like Lesh, but of course, already banned out. I'm struggling for the win condition coming in from Arkosh. Of course, you can get a lot of Roshans, you can get a lot of pushing done during those Aegises, but once it's time to get on the enemy team's high ground and actually make an attempt at their Ancient, I think Arkosh are going to have a pretty difficult time because, again, this Winter Wyvern hero, he's going to nuke out your waves, he's going to make it really hard for you to ever commit onto a single building, and that's where, really, Canis Vulpus is going to need to kind of ball out of control, and if he can play on top of the line and the Winter Wyvern cause chaos for these supports, it's going to feel better. But still, I think Arkosh are going to struggle to get those objectives aside from Roche because their team really isn't equipped for that. And they don't even, or they aren't even able to get an offlaner that sort of accomplishes that goal. So they're all in on killing you this game. They're just going to run at you full steam ahead. Yeah, very much a fight oriented lineup here. But as you said, even if you can sort of take those fights, you need to win them definitively. Otherwise, what is the follow-up there? If you lose two, three of your heroes in this exchange, you're not exactly going to be burning your way through those structures in the aftermath. So if you're Arkosh here, I don't know. It's it's just a situation where you really do need to bank on your team fight power, your aggressiveness just being enough to completely overwhelm the felt lineup. And I don't entirely know that that's going to be the case here, at least not maybe in the first 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, and now if you're felt, of course, you have a lot of time to mull over this pick. Could be the Kunkka. We could be seeing a... Really, I think that Kunkka would be a pretty good fit here. Of course, Razor would have also been pretty nice. And you do secure the Ember Spirit just a little bit, because ideally you wouldn't want to pick the Void Spirit into that lane. That lane does not feel good for him, and eventually you do sort of just get ran at. Even though you get the Yules eventually for the Searing Change, and you do have that guaranteed setup, it never feels fantastic. And I think that's what Felt are considering right now. What lane do we want Tay to sort of deal with? Because... If TA can get anything done in this lane, I feel like, again, Felt have the more robust lineup where they're going to hit this very strong 15-minute timing where if they can contest with the Roshan, if they can get themselves ready for that fight, then we're going to start seeing Tier 2 Towers fall. Their lineup is just really good at what it's good at. And at the same time, Arkosh have such an execution-oriented uh, playstyle right now that... If they fall short, if they start feeding on their supports, they fall behind in levels, every single member on the Arkosh side, really, except for the Ursin, of course, Ursin needs levels to do Rosh, they need those levels. If they're not able to get those early spells, then 
it feels like they are going to kind of run out of gas in the tank because they aren't flash farmers. They aren't the sort of uh, stack up and just win heroes. And they're going for the OD. This is something that felt have run a lot of times in the past, but sort of a dead hero. I don't think has really made the resurgence yet, but versus uh, both Ursa and Ember Spirit, I mean, this is a pretty good OD game somehow. And now I'm sort of wondering a little bit, you see... Uh... Yellow Flash was actually the one to pick up the OD. I don't know if that's just a situation where uh, he's the player with more experience or if this is actually sort of uh, a planned lane swap for them because you would assume uh, previously the Luna would end up in the safe lane, the OD would be uh, mid, but with the player sort of switching that up a little bit, I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and see exactly who goes where, but... As you said, looks like it might be a pretty good OD game in a situation where Felt already feel like they've put together the stronger draft. So this could get pretty dangerous for that Arkosh side. Yeah, and now you have sort of double save. The problem with OD beforehand, uh, of course, in the past, we always see OD Slark as the best example because you get that regen in the banishment. But most heroes that you Astral are probably still going to die. But in this game, you have that Winter Wyvern as your sort of secondary support where... Maybe if you do just put everything on one hero, they are going to survive. You are going to be able to kite it out. And again, Odie, one of the best heroes versus this Ursa, where if you're not careful on Pale Horse, if you do pop that Enrage a little bit too carelessly, then you're going to get put under, and then you're going to have to contend with that. And if you get dragged out a little too far in these fights, that's exactly the type of fight that both Odie and Timbersaw love. They love to take it low and slow, get those stacks up on you, and then burst you in one shot. So I'm pretty worried for Arkosh. I mean, it just really feels like they've, I don't want to say drafted themselves into a corner. That feels maybe a little bit too harsh, but they have not put themselves in a fantastic position for success just based off of the draft alone. So we'll have to see. You mentioned during that draft that this was a very sort of execution dependent lineup uh, for that Arkosh side, and they do have the players to sort of hit that execution, of course. Uh, I say that, we have absolutely no idea who the identities of the Arkosh players are, and any insinuation otherwise is going to be very strongly denied. But we'll see what they can put together here. We can see already a bit of a movement, though, from that felt side getting across the river for the early ward, but I think they just dropped that ward. Yeah, the Arkosh one was already there, so they know all about that, unfortunately, and... There is a sentry ward up on the Enchantress, so that should be de-warded fairly quickly if Arkosh just want to take that vision away right at the start. Yeah, and we'll have to see. Usually, whenever we see teams playing versus this Enchantress, it's really important to scout out which lane she's going to and then try to block up her camps. But just as he's got that sentry, but again, they are going to lose this ward. Uh, pretty much immediately, so it's gonna feel a little bit bad. But if Justice can keep those runes out of the Ember Spirit's bottle, that's really his main goal. Bit of a fight for the rune here in that sort of south side river area, but well, I mean, I say a fight. It's it's really just the enchantress sort of throwing a couple of right clicks out there. But uh, Zor still able to find that bounty rune, so all is well on the felt side. Should pretty much just be an even split there. Meanwhile, uh, the ward does end up getting removed after those bounties get picked up. So a little bit of extra gold into the Enchantress's hands, and we get this laning stage underway. And looking at Pale Horse, this is going to be one of, if not the most sort of important lanes for that Arkosh side. The Ursa really has to be the primary damage dealer here. You obviously have the Ember who can you sort of help out to a certain extent, but if your Ursa is not on point, if he's not able to just sort of get right into the middle and deal that damage later in this game, your team fight power is just effectively going to be non-existent, so stronger start Pale Horse can get off to, the better he's going to be. As a, did he just leap over that Earth Spike? Yep, and got the range creep in uh, Pale Horse style. But uh, yeah, almost uh, to that degree, I think it's important that Zora has a really slow start. If this Timbersaw does get a little bit too many levels, if Justice's rotations can be so easy and seamless where he's just able to walk out of the lane, give Zora an entire creep wave to himself, that's going to be almost disaster for the Arkosh side. Because as soon as Justice is able to have an effect on this mid lane, then again, it's going to start slowing down your Ember Spirit. It's going to give that Soul XP over to the Timbersaw. And if Zora is able to hit 6 before the Ursa, then it just means he's going to be pressured out of lane. He's going to have to make that early rotation. So I think it's really going to be dependent on Owie to make those good decisions, make it so that Justice has to sit here and babysit the Timbersaw. Otherwise, this lane could really get out of control. Right. 
as Pale Horse. Ah, just trying to sort of tag up Zora a little bit there, but the Timber's starting to get those points up in the reactive armor. So you're going to be, at a certain point, sort of running out of early opportunities here. But as you mentioned, if you can keep the Lion's attention focused on this lane, you're at least going to sort of come up with some sort of advantage. As we actually take a look over to that middle lane, how's it going so far? Relatively solid for both of those mid laners. Canis Vulpus able to grab himself up a water rune. We see yellow flash on the other side. Uh, grabbing a rune of his own, but he actually doesn't have his bottle yet, and he's actually not doesn't have it yet. He's just not going for one. He's all in on that Meteor Hammer build right away. So the bottle, or lack thereof, is going to sort of reduce his durability just that little bit more. But if you can make faster progress to the Meteor Hammer, that could very well be a sort of risk that pays off for him. But he's going to have to get there first. Well, and then that is the one issue with this lane. While Arcane Orb is fantastic versus the Ember Spirit, you with the build that you go now on D OD, you're not that sort of, I'm going to play for the Bounty Rune, I'm going to play for pushing out this wave, I'm going to fall from the small camp. You just don't do that on this hero. That's why we saw the hero more or less be ignored pretty much by every single other team. Because while he's doing this, it's just going to be Canis Vulpus farming up with Flame Guard playing around these runes, and that's where he has a lot more regen available to him. Of course, it is a counter pick. If he ever wants to show up to his normal lane, it is going to be a little bit harder for him, and you see Yellow Flash is just getting up in his face, being pretty obnoxious. If he knew that the bounty was still there, he'd probably go snipe it out, but this is going to be annoying for Canis Vulpus, but again, he has the runes, he has the regen. His lane shouldn't really affect his gameplay too much. Yeah, it just feels like... Whatever Yellow Flash is able to do to him in the first maybe 5-10 to 10 minutes, Canis Vulpus will have, as you said, the runes and the stacks or camps to sort of fall back on. So, I don't think this is really a situation where your Odie's, Odie's going to be able to massively outplay his opponents. He's just here looking really for as many last hits as he possibly can get. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, a Wyvern in a little bit of a trouble, but able to fall back successfully. It pops the salve. Taze even there for maybe a little bit in the way of sort of... Uh, a deterrent as Gremlo doesn't really feel like going all the way in there, but they are going to go in now with the Burrow Strike on to the Luna. Crow, though, is not in position to follow this one up. He's getting hit up by the Lucent Beam, slowed now by the Arctic Burn as well, but Tay is still in some trouble. He's going to turn around and try to fight Ooh, his way out of this, admitting. popping those stick charges. Will it be enough? He needs to turn around for one more hit, but okay. Kayanis Gatsi is the one who gets it instead. Crow will fall. Gremlo does finish off the play just a second later to get that kill onto the Luna, but at least First Blood goes the way of Felt. According to the team fight recap, they do come away with more gold, and Honestly, I don't think that's a massive setback for the Luna. She's going to be back up in a few seconds, and it does have the TP at the ready. Yeah, free courier ride, you get your items out, and unfortunately, there was a double wave coming into his tower, so all of that is going towards the Wyvern. So, really, the Wyvern's happy. He's jacked. He's got boots now. He's going to be pretty safe in his lane. And now the play can't really be made on the Wyvern. With these boots up now, it's really just going to be kind of casting your spells on this Luna and forcing her to slow down or itemize a little bit more defensively for that regen. And they had a really smart sentry in lane as well. Uh -oh. But here we go, oh. Gremlo. Getting hit up here. The sentry's been dropped. Isn't He's just going to... mana for stun. Huh. Is he... Yeah, is he just going to run? Okay. Just runs away. Thought he was in a little bit more trouble than that. But apparently, uh, Tay and Koyana Skatsi are showing a little bit of respect to that Sandstorm. It is level 3, so it was hitting him up pretty hard. So at that point, if they Mid. keep on pushing, they could be in trouble. Speaking of trouble, yeah, middle lane. Yellow Flash getting hit up here. They're going to lock him down with Searing Chains. They get him up with that sort of tomato hit as well. As the Hellbear Smasher comes in for the smack, and Yellow Flash will be taken down. That's a pretty hefty rotation from Arkosh, but it gets the job done. Yeah, and it's just super simple coming in from the Enchantress. You just get your second level enchant, you get a big creep, and now there's pressure on your mid laner's tower, and you don't really have a fantastic answer to it. I was going to say the Wyvern is really your best option, but he's really low in mana. He's just going to be able to nuke out the wave, and we'll probably have to uh, clarity up or go back to base pretty soon here give the lane over to the OD, and now, again, this is free space for Gremlo. The reason they couldn't make that play top, even though it looks like he was pretty much caught dead to rights, was just because the Lena wasn't showing. She was already setting up on mid, so I think Arkosh are pulling a little bit ahead in this early game. They're looking pretty good so far. 2-1 to one in terms of the kill count. Net worth lead, not quite to the 1k mark, but you see Crow making his way back up, but over in the bottom lane, Pale Horse and Aoi push their way in. They can't get onto Zor, obviously, with the tankiness on that timber, so instead... They pick up the easier kill. Justice, uh, a lion at level, what, four? Yeah, not really going to have much in the way of defensive capabilities there. He was lacking the mana to keep himself alive. So 
Arkosh Strike again, and now Pale Horse is kind of pushing up onto Zor here. I don't really think he wants this fight, but he's just trying to intimidate that Timber, push him back a little bit, really keep him stuck under that tower for as long as he can. And you look at the level discrepancy, he was, he was level 4 while Pale Horse just popped his level 6, and this is exactly what you didn't want. Not only was the Enchantress out-rotating you, but also out-leveling you, and I feel like Justice, he hasn't really been able to have the effect on this game that he otherwise would be having, and yeah, top. They're going in, Gremlo wanted the fight, he did channel out the ult, it wasn't enough though as Kriyanakatsi came in with that cold embrace, and now this one's starting to turn. Crow is trapped in the tree line, good stun coming out onto two, I doubt he has the damage yet to actually kill Tay there as the Luna holds Ooh, her ground. That Owie. does allow Gremlo to get away now, yeah, Owie's going for the snipe. Tried to hit up that shockwave with the satyr, but... Unfortunately, it's not quite enough damage, but he is still hitting him up a little bit here. That Wyvern does need to be careful, but looks like everyone's going to be just fine there. Felt managed to pick up the kill on a solid defense underneath their tower, but Gremlo, I mean, he doesn't want to give up. He's trying to push back in, but the Earth Spike will lock him down. He's getting that mana drained away as well, but he wants it in with the Burrow. They are sending over that Stormcrafter as well for a little bit of extra damage, but at this point, this is just, it's just weird. They're all just dancing around this tower. Gremlo still refuses to back away, and with just the two supports here, they could actually go for it again. Gremlo needs the burrow. As Crow rotated his way mid, they're going to be able to take down Yellow Flash, but we're keeping our eyes up top. This fight just will not end. Justice is eventually going to be taken down as Ali gets the kill, and now Koyan Nikotsky is uh, looking like he's going to be dropping yep. as well. Just not respecting the enchant, just the third level in Impendus. It just does so much damage, and... The supports, they had both used their TPs previously, they were really running out of gas, and then you you lose your mid laner as well, I think, just very simply to a chain sleight of fist, and then I believe he just astraled himself into an LSA, he wasn't ready for it, and these are the early levels I was worried about. Both your supports are level 5, level 5 and a quarter, and this is all before Tome, so this is just a really good start for Arkosh. I think Pale Horse was maybe forced a little bit further out of his lane just because Zor is Timbersaw. He does have that pure damage span, and Timber Chain is just one of those oppressive spells, but as soon as he gets this Morbid Mask, then you have to be concerned about Roche, and I think really, Yellow Flash, he's got to start to get active. He has his Meteor Hammer boots, so maybe you can make a play onto, I guess, really just the lena because gremlin's just gonna stun you if you try to approach him i don't know this od it's a big question mark for me still yeah we talked about the potential obviously in terms of the matchups here but so far haven't quite seen that in action meanwhile gremlo uh, up in the top lane he's still pushing this one out and this tier one tower really not looking so hot unless someone comes up to defend it maybe they can pop the glyph they would get it back once the tower falls but that's just gonna Bottom. delay rather than prevent it as yeah bottom lane some trouble here for pale horse he is going to get jumped in on trying to dance his way through the tree line can they lock him down yeah they can Zor timber chains his way forward gremlo though bit of an aggressive tp but he doesn't have the man to actually do anything there so i understand sort of the attempt but now they're potentially walking into a trap as they do get stunned up on crow he is going to hit the lsa though on to tay but there's going to be your cold embrace buying time Zor meanwhile goes to work with the damage crow taken down gremlo now on the run no mana to get himself away though he does have a vanguard but that durability might not be enough although with the maxed out sandstorm they'll kind of have to back off here and gremlo he is going to be able to go in for the kill kyanikotsky will be taken down but that is going to buy a little bit of time yellow flash comes in dropping the meteor hammer will that dot be enough gremlo is ticking down and he will die as felt Managed to get the second kill there. Unfortunately, they have to sacrifice the Wyvern in the process, but two for one. Very much going to go their way. Things got a little hairy, but they're able to win the fight and back out. And now it just felt, do you make the play? Do you realize that this Ursa's in Roche? That all started just because Pale Horse, I think, accidentally used the Enrage. He thought he was going to be able to get more aggressive on the Timber Slow than he otherwise would, but Zor played that really well. He just never let himself get too many stacks, but too late. 11 minute Roche. Pale Horse has got it, so he's got two lives up, he's got the Morbid Mask, he's got the Chipped Vest there as well for a little bit of that sort of damage uh, return onto opponents, but Yellow Flash is kind of chasing him. Looked like he was sort of catching up to him for a moment, but Yellow Flash will instead make his way top, but now we've got a bit of a situation here. Owie is sort of scouting around, he's already dropped down a ward or two, and he is sending excuse me, sending the creep in there as well, so he's really just trying to be as disruptive as possible as enchantresses tend to do but this is going to be a little bit rough for felt they don't quite have the same i'd say safe access to their jungle that they would prefer at this point in the game but at least tay on the luna is still building up net worth wise sitting in fourth maybe not the ideal position but eh, 
Mask Madness is online. The Possessed Mask is in the neutral slot as well. So this Luna is going to be able to just jungle up so long as no one comes to get her. But oh, right on cue, Crow. Just trying to be a little bit annoying. Not looking for the full fight. But every play like this is going to potentially matter. Arkosh, they know if we want to fight, we've got the Aegis. If we don't find the opportunity for a fight, we can at least try and slow down the likes of the Luna and the OD. Put just that little bit of pressure on them. And try to now take control of the map as we see the two supports pushing their way mid. But first, they're going to push onto the Wyvern. Hitting them up with the LSA. Do they use the Laguna? Yes, they will. So, Golden Brace not able to save against that. Crow finds the kill. Tier 1 tower ends up falling as well. And Arkosh just sort of keep on rolling here. There was a slight setback in that previous fight. But they're looking insanely good now. 3k up. And now, oh, Tane's just going to lose all those creeps over by Crow. But they're struggling to hold on to these objectives. Their lineup, uh, if they're not able to really force this OD oh. into a good team fight. Sword. Oh, no. Trying to timber chain himself out. Gremlo is not going to be able to hit him up with the last couple of ticks. But okay. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get him, but there's another fight breaking out there. Justice goes in for the finger, I believe, onto the Ember. It's going to do a lot of damage, but not enough to actually finish him off. But there's going to be the side of Fizz. He actually dodged the Meteor uh, Hammer, jumping away with the Remnant. He's jumping directly into Zor, though, but his teammates were able to finish him off in time. So Zor will fall, and now Canis Vulpus realizes, I can go back in. He's looking for it. Doesn't have the Searing Chains for the lockdown, though, so it was only the damage he was going to be able to throw out. Crow, though, continuing to chase, but the LSA will miss, and it looks like Arkosh will now back away, but... They got another kill, took down that Timber Saw. They've now spotted out this rather sizable Ancient stack, and yeah, they want it. They're going all in the team farm here, and this is going to suck. If you're felt, you lose what is this, a three or four stack on these Ancients. That is money they desperately needed onto their cores, and instead, Arkosh are just going to take away almost all of it. And right now, it, you really feel like Arkosh are hitting the timing that their draft really set themselves up for. I think if Felt made the plays they were going to make maybe three minutes earlier, sync up on that 10 minute cart, they would be able to trade their towers out a little bit more efficiently because as of right now, they don't have anything. All of their towers are still up on the Arkosh side. They haven't been able to make those trades. And it's those trades that are going to keep their head above water in this game because right now there is no counterplay across the map. You see how impossible it is for the OD to ever get a successful meteor hammer off. And there's no hero to really help him get it off the ground besides Justice and Justice has had a really cold game from the line. He hasn't been finding those two, three man earth spikes. He hasn't been finding too many disables. And at the same time, every single time they find an engagement, Aoi always has a creep just running through, giving you vision, knowing exactly what heroes are in the vicinity. So it's going to continue to get kind of rough for them. They need to be really careful because they lose one, two team fights. Then maybe Arkosh get a few buildings. And Gremlo. Gonna get jumped in on. They hit him up with both the Dust and the Sentry, but Gremlo somehow they not dead him. yet, but at this point, yeah, they are gonna be able to take him down. I think at the end he was trying to channel the Epi, but dies before he can get it off, so at least the cooldown doesn't get popped there, but if you're felt, you get the kill that you wanted. Now you have a chance to push down uh, their first tower of the game, actually, if they can get this, but the Glyph is coming through. Will there be a response from the side of Arkosh right now? They're kind of looking for Yellow Flash, trying to hit him up. Owie does have the slow with the enchant. Can they actually do this? Canis Vulpus wants in. He needs the Searing Chains, though, to really keep this fight going. He's going to be yeah. able to get that route down. And yeah, that OD will fall. There was maybe a chance he gets denied by the Ancients, but no such luck. Owie finds the kill. The push onto the Tier 1 tower was technically successful, but you're going to lose one of your core heroes in the process. But now Zor, he's behind Owie. He wants this fight. He's trying to get in onto that Enchantress. Can he actually do so? I mean, he can, but I'm not sure if he really wants to at this point, as they are going to start shifting their focus, trying to get over onto Canis Vulpus instead. They hit him up with the Hex into the Earth Spike, into the Lucent Beam, into the Finger of Death. That is going to be enough to take him down as, uh... Well, the Emperor just gets maybe a little overconfident there, pushing too far forward. I think he, at that point, was assuming his teammates were going to come up from behind, but there was just a little bit too much separation, and Belt were able to get the isolation play and find the kill that they want. Now they want even more. Crow is standing directly on top of this ward, and he is going to get immediately blown up. Gremlo can do nothing to save him, as a Sand King really just has to sort of hide away, but he doesn't have his TP, so he's going to be here Yellow for a flash. while. Yellow flashed. Mm. Jumped in on mid. Pale Horse and Owie able to make that, well, make that move work, so... They do lose heroes across the map. That is going to be unfortunate, but once they realize just how many heroes were hanging out in that bottom lane... They're at least going to be able to make some sort of counter play there as now uh, Canis Vulpus respawned and I think jumped back to the remnant he had left there, but that just means he's in he trouble again. More. Okay, he'll take down the Wyvern at least. Now he needs to make his way out of here. Uses that last remnant to jump up onto the high ground and it looks like he is going to be able to get away. So first time around, maybe a bit overconfident, gets himself killed. Second time, he's able to find that pick and get himself away to safety. 
And that is something that Arkosh do need to be a little bit cautious of. They split off a little bit to finish off their items. I think they wanted that vessel and the Blink Tiger finished up on the SK, but really, whenever this four man is together, you leave the Ursa alone. He's got his Diffue. He's going to be fine. His Aegis did expire just a minute ago, but this is the real good team fight core, and well, what a chance. There is Laguna Blade in, Justice taken down already. They did get out that Winter's Curse onto Canis Volpus though, but the damage he's taking wasn't significant. Yellow Flash tries to go in for the ult, but yeah, the two-man stun from Gremlo, he does die on the other end of it, but mission accomplished. He locks it down, they're going to be able to completely clean house, and Justice, that's unfortunate. He bought back, TP'd in, and immediately died a second time, so overall, four kills going the way of Arkosh. They do sacrifice Gremlo, but... They're going to be more than okay with that trade-off. And now, Zor, I don't know if you want to be here. He's trying to go for the Ancient's Pale Horse, though. He's going to sort of spot him out, but in this situation, if you're the Ursa, I think you'd just rather take the last hits. You weren't really going to catch up. One Timber Chain would have gotten Zor away anyway. So, goes for the gold instead of the kill, and Arkosh continuing to push ahead. The only downside to that play is that they weren't quite able to get enough damage onto the Tier 2 to actually bring it down, but now this could be a problem crow sticks around a little bit too long he is going to get clipped by the meteor hammer but here comes pale horse and canis vulpus they want into the fight crow will fall but yellow flash is kind of caught here he has one more second for the astral can he save himself no he can't yellow flash will fall pale horse now dishing out the damage on Azor. the timber saw dropping low trying to chain his way out of this one and i think he's going to make it out or maybe not searing chains will hit him up he's got that uh, got that urn on him as well but that's not a full or wasn't excuse me a full spirit vessel when it was applied i think it sort of came to him in the middle of the fight so that is going to be enough for the Timbersaw to fall back, but they lose Yellow Flash. And it's a really sad, uh, really situation for Yellow Flash. Every single time he tries to channel out that uh, Meteor Hammer, if he uses his Astral not defensively, until he gets this Aghanim Scepter, he is just dead. He is just dying over and over. Just one or two heroes just immediately run at him as soon as he see, or as soon as they see that Astral committed, and there really is no option for him except have just another Astral. And oh God. the Ember Spirit? Wait. Uh... Uh, mm, okay, bit of a bait. Gremlo's going to come in for the stun, but this is really just to try and get Canis Volpus away, and it's not going to work. Justice hits him up with a finger of death. Yellow Flash comes in for a little bit of extra damage there with that Arcane Orb, and that... Um, ET, I'm not entirely sure what the plan was there, but it, it didn't work out. Canis Volpus gets himself caught out and taken down, and Arkosh, I mean, even his own teammates seemed like they were taken surprise, or by surprise by that play. Yeah, I think Crow was really making a motion to head out of there. At the same time, Gremlin had already committed his Burrow Strike, and there's no pipe coming out from the Sand King. They're really defensive item-wise. They aren't uh, aren't the best here, and they're making a play on to Ursa. Go horse, hit by the Yules. Earth Spike, okay. He's going to get timed nice out. They get the Hex down as well, and Pale Horse, I mean, he's just dead. Astral should be enough to finish him off. Not quite, okay. The Enrage did keep him alive, but... Zora's going to finish it himself, going in there for the last bit of nuke damage as Pale Horse just gets caught out on his opponent's side of the map. The Vision game sort of helping Felt make some plays here, and at this point, you do need to be careful if you're Arkosh. Oh, excuse me, Arkosh. You're still up by 5k about 20 minutes in, but the Luna is starting to catch up a little bit. You see Zor and, honestly, even Yellow Flash starting to get maybe a little bit more confident with their combos in these fights, so it's not just going to be sort of a steamroller moving forward, although as I say that, they do take down the Wyvern fairly easily in that middle lane, and now they're in on to that OD. So, well, maybe I was the one getting a little bit ahead of myself oh, there. The as the Centaur stun. That, that's not okay. Yellow Flash taken down. Gremlo wants even more, pushing forward with Burrow into the epicenter, as they are going to get some damage on Zor. They hit him up with the Spirit Vessel as well. And at this point, what else do they really have to fight with? Tay is coming over, throwing out the Lucent Beam. That's going to lock in his Vulpus down momentarily. And at this point, I think Arkosh realized we need to either isolate someone entirely or back off but at that point Zor goes too far forward once again felt just out of position three separate times here in the last maybe minute and a half losing the wyvern mid you end up losing yellow flash there near the jungle and now Zor taken down as well so i said arkosh need to be careful but if your opponents are going to sort of step out of line like that that's just a free kill every single time yeah, and really now, while Tay is catching up, there isn't a fantastic situation for him in this matchup. The Ursa is always able to kill you. You are never really going to be in a situation where you can just uh, sit there and fight one for one with him. And second Roche, 22 minutes into the game, this is going to be pretty bad. Shard's not going to be up, going to most likely put that over on the Ursa as well. So he's going to be that frontliner that the Sand King can't really fulfill. But 
it doesn't really matter because you have this Aegis Ursa and they caught the Wyvern in the river. Oh, man. Well. Cold Embrace will buy time, certainly, but eh, it's only going to delay the inevitable. The kill will go Pale Horse's way. He was the one, as you mentioned, to pick up that shard as well. So he does have the Earth Shock upgrade. He's got two lives to work with. And now they're on the attack. They've caught out Tay in the top lane and felt at this point, it just feels like they're sort of very slowly but very steadily falling apart here. Too many heroes just getting caught out by themselves as right on cue, Justice, hit up in the middle lane. Nice Hex turning around on a Pale Horse. The problem is, Gremlo's there to help out. Burrow Strike connects, Pale Horse gets the damage and the kill, and Felt are really going to start feeling the heat here in just really the next couple of minutes. Arkosh, with this Aegis and Cheese, really don't have any reason not to continue pushing forward. And all of this as well, Aoi has playing or has been playing pretty much adjacent to his teammates. He has been sort of the split pusher, even though you have boots of travel on Crow. I feel like he's just been glued to Gremlo pretty much this entire game. And I think Felt just stuck around mid a little bit too long. They keep on giving away these kills. I think Yellow Flash is having a pretty terrible game. I think he's going to need to reset at least mentally a little bit after this one. And 12k up this is starting to become a mountain of gold that you have to contend with every single death now that he uh, sort of gives away going forward is going to just be a really big deficit they're, they're gonna have to contend with because now he's gone for the manta style he hasn't gone for that bkb yasha so if they decide to break high ground just a little bit too soon on Arkosh, they can definitely get punished for it, but they could also set themselves up in a position where they don't care about going high ground. Instead, they're going to get a 27k gold lead. They're going to find it even easier to pick off your heroes. And then I don't really know what you do because Holy Locket is up. You have Aeon Disc uh, not completely assembled on the Sand King. Felt are running out of targets right now, and that's their biggest problem. And Pale Horse got a BKB. He is just going to completely single out one of your heroes, and he's going to run them down until they're dead. And they got to get out of bottom real quick here. Yeah, they need to fall back right now. Zor, though, is going to get hit up. The Laguna deployed by Crow. Pale Horse, though, will be the one to get the kill. But everyone else is able to escape. The problem is, you do still lose a core hero there. The Timber Saw is dead for 40. And, well, if you're felt, maybe you can put something together. We do see a couple of heroes moving top. But I don't think they realize that Gremlo uh, is hanging out in this tree line. So, not sure if they're going to be able to hit him up. And even if they do, he's got the oh. Aeon discompleted now. And he wants the fight. Pain is full. This is TPing in as well. Onto that outpost. Justice is going to get rooted up and taken down. And, well, what do they do here? There is an ult up on the Wyvern. Yellow Flash is holding onto that Sanity's Eclipse as well. But they're not going to commit it. And now, Tay, hey. uh, Tay, why are you still here? This is a problem. He has no BKB and no TP. So, he's just stuck in the middle of it. And they're going to lose him. Yeah, and the Orchid coming out from the Ember Spirit being really, honestly, super obnoxious. Yellow Flash, now that he has the Ags, he can't even use it because I'm assuming the Ember Spirit is just going to continue to uh, Orchid him pretty much off cooldown. And now your Wyvern's dying in your own base. How to commit the curse. All of this feels pretty terrible if you're felt right now. Hell Horse just pops in, or not even the full enrage, just the temporary one from the Urshock. He walks away. Aegis not used. BKB wasn't even used, so... We are 25 minutes in. The Ursa was just able to dive a tier 3 tower, didn't get the kill, but just walks away. I mean, that really sort of tells you everything you need to know about the state of the game right now. Felt are absolutely on the back foot, and I'm not really sure what they do here. This OD really hasn't seemed to come into his own. I mean, he does now have that Ags upgrade for the Astral, but I just don't feel like that's really going to be enough. This OD play mentioned in the draft maybe there were some good matchups for it but there's a reason why this hero has really sort of fallen off the face of the earth in terms of the meta he's well, maybe not the most reliable hero in the world right now yellow flash is sort of feeling uh that in full force as owie is pushing his way into the tower gremlo well jumped onto an illusion there with the burrow strike but just wanted to be sure and at this point, I'm not sure if they actually get this tower just yet. Gremlo and Canis Vulpus are coming over to help, but they are going to need that new creep wave. It is going to arrive fairly quickly, and uh, as long as Felt don't look to defend this, they should still be able to push. And this is not a great spot if Felt are actually looking for a fight. So at this point, it feels like they're just going to let it go. Zor will try, but that may have been a bit too far already. Gremlo blinks in, goes for the Burrow Strike. They're going to root him up with the Searing Chains here as well, but Canis Vulpus and Gremlo don't have the damage alone to kill the Timber Saw. They really do need the Ursa or the Laguna Blade. Uh, from the Lena in that scenario. And that's where their team uh -oh. does still struggle. Yeah, the Ember Spear, but 
Down low, jumping in. There's going to be that Aeon Disc popping now, or Aeon, excuse me. But Pale Horse now into the fight, trying to dish out the damage. But the Yule Scepter will lock him down, and Arkosh may be a little bit too far forward there. Gremlo will be taken down. Pale Horse, though, still wants the fight, but there's going to be the Winter's Curse. Keeping him isolated, he'll jump his way over the wall just as his Aegis was expiring. So, very nicely timed by Pale Horse to get himself away. But at this point, Belt, they don't want to let their opponents go here. They're trying to push their way forward, but it's a little too difficult for them to actually catch anyone. But Zor, he's going to try and chain his way forward. Can he get into the river? No. Instead, they're looking to push a little bit further to the northwest, where Crow is stopping to farm a creep wave this could get a little bit dangerous for him but trying to make his way into the tree line looking for that tp out can they hit him up in time no didn't get it he needed to cut through the tree first to get the vision i believe so by the time he sees the lena it's a little bit too late to react and the crow's able to get himself away they do lose gremlo there and the aegis does time out and in the long run they really didn't get much in terms of actual damage onto the tower so if you're felt you know, it's maybe not a massively game-changing play, but is it, it is at least a step in the right direction for them. And that's where they really do need to be careful because, uh, again, it feels like Canis Volpus is getting a little bit too aggressive. He hasn't been necessarily dying, but every single time he does get put in those terrible positions, it feels like a hero has to die for him instead. There you just see Gremel getting punished. He gets his Andus immediately popped, and then you get the curse coming onto Pale Horse, so everybody gets the call to back out, and now, they are just going to wait for third Roche, most likely, before making another pass. That's why Ali has gone for this Helm of the Dominator. He's going for a Helm of the Overlord, just because he knows that his teammates are not good at hitting towers. His team will never be good at hitting towers, but... Oh, mid. Yeah, Horse wants the fight. They tried to jump in initially there onto the Winter Wyvern, and... Well... Oh. Will still be taken down. Now Zor's oh, in trouble as well. That Yule Scepter locks him up. He's not going to be able to Timber Chain himself out of here as the Silence comes in from Canis Vulpus with that Orchid, and Zor will be taken down. Both of those heroes, though, do currently have their buybacks available. So if Arkosh make an attempt at the high ground, they will be able to get those heroes back in to defend it. But at this point, Arkosh don't really look like they want to take any sort of high ground maneuver. Last time, they got maybe a little bit ahead of themselves and pushed in before they were ready. So we do see a little bit of hesitance this time around, and obviously this time, no Aegis to fall back on. Yep, they want to finish up their tier threes. They don't want to play into buybacks. And again, if they can just farm the entire map, then they are happy because this Luna is finding no places to farm. You see, she shows herself top for just a second there, sees that the Ember Spirit's channeling the TP. If, if he really wanted to, he could have maybe searched for her a little bit more. But again, this Luna is not finding the farm. Every single time she sends an illusion down to the lane, Aoi's always pretty much been in a position to take it over with the enchant. And that's where maybe you want to see Felt making a few smoke plays. I don't think they've made many plays in that regard. It feels like they really are struggling to have anything sort of come forward. And that's, again, an issue with this dinosaur of a hero, the OD, where you just struggle to kind of do everything that other heroes do very seamlessly. You even see uh, Pale Horse is now going for an overwhelming blink. He doesn't care for the Basher anymore. He knows if he can slow up these heroes, then they're pretty much dead. Because both cores right now on Felt, they're struggling to finish these BKBs, and there's no good option for them. There's just simply not enough farm on the map. Grimlo wants in. They hit up the Timber Saw there with the Silence and the Burrow, but there's going to be the Cold Embrace. Pale Horse, though, into the fight, taking down the Wyvern first. So no threat from that Winter's Curse. And, well, if you're Felt now, do you fall back successfully? Can you get the Wyvern back in if this does turn into a larger engagement? For now, it looks like it's not going to. That was a missed Burrow Strike onto the OD, so he is okay for the time being. He's going to Astral himself up here as well, but Pale Horse wants in. BKB activated. Blinking forward. That's going to force oh. out the buyback. Kuyana Skatsi is back into the engagement, but he silenced before he can ult. Oh, no. The Wyvern's dead. Yellow Flash gone as well. No Winter's Curse. Buyback coming out now from the OD as he will TP in. But at this point, Felt looking like they're starting to fall apart. Zor is going to get hit up here. Defensive Astral, though, will keep him safe. Gremlo, meanwhile, actually jumps in onto the high ground with that Epicenter active. Didn't really do much in the way of damage, but it does push Yellow Flash as well as Justice back. And at this point, Felt really are starting to lose this one. Yellow Flash will be dropping for a second time here. That was his buyback, so he is out of this one for over 70 seconds. But... Well, Arkosh, how willing are they to push back in? Pale Horse is already backed away. We see Canis Vulpus now teeping himself home as well. So at this point, they're not going to go after the objectives, but really, that is exactly what you needed. You take the fight, you force out multiple buybacks from that felt side, and the defense for the uh, felt squad right now is just kind of crippled after that loss. 
And now you have the guaranteed Roche spawn in a minute and 15 seconds. I'm sure Arkosh are going to be very comfortable just waiting for it. They don't want to risk anything. Again, you see, even though all those buybacks were committed, very little tower damage. It's just not something their lineup really does. But if everybody's dead, it's just free range. I think Helm of the Overlord is now coming out for Ali, So he's going to be able to have those Ancients now pushing down on their buildings. Just a little bit more pushing power in that regard. And Tay does have his bkb finally he will be able to sit there and right click but really the bkb isn't what makes this luna feel nice it's the item that comes right afterwards and if tay is able to farm up get a butterfly before this game is over maybe felt have a shot but that is a big 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 maybe because everyone on their side after those buybacks all of their item progression is stopped i doubt yellow flash is going to be able to find that bkb before the game is uh, sort of nearing its end and as soon as they know that Roche is alive, Arkosh are going to force them to fight in the pit. And I don't think Felt can take that fight. So it's just going to be a third Aegis refresher, maybe, Ags, maybe, coming into your high ground. And that's where Felt, their high ground needs to be so good. And Pale Horse has now finished off that overwhelming blink. So he is going to have that potential slow when he jumps in. So if you're Felt and you don't have a BKB, then uh, you're really not going to be moving. You are stuck in that engagement gonna have to just try and hold your ground and as we've seen over the past couple of fights belt's ability to hold their ground has not been fantastic so to a certain extent just sort of sitting on death ground right now they will have to fight to the best of their abilities and the question is where will that fight now come you were mentioning that roche pit sort of seems like the most obvious location and roshan has now respawned so we got the Aegis, we got Cheese, we got ourselves an Agonim's a Blessing to work with, and Arkosh now realizes back up, they're going to push right in. And you see they even just smoked out the Luna. Everybody else sat on the high ground, they wanted to get her into the enemy triangle, but Teddy needs to be so careful. If he has to pop his BKB to TP home, all of the waves are always in a good spot. You have the Boots of Travel on the Luna, you have the Sand King just burning a hole in the mid lane, and while you are able to cut these creep waves with Tay, you're only able to get one wave in, so... This is not feeling like a good situation. And if they catch Wind of Tay, all it takes is one TP, one Yule Scepter, and then the game does feel sort of blown wide open. And now Owie, look at him. Helm of the Overlord. He's got two Ancients. He's just going to start running at you. Two Ancients and I think the Kobold there as well for the little bit of extra move speed. So they're just sort of zooming their way around the map right now, looking for that high ground push. You mentioned earlier... They didn't really have the greatest ability to do damage to the towers, but now with those Ancients literally just standing on the front line, they are going to go in for it, but Gremlo, uh, he wanted the fight instead. Burrow is going to actually get him away. He was trying to hit Absor there with that stun, but the defensive Astral will keep him safe. So, well, the Ancients do give them a bit of a front line, but at the end of the day, Fel will still have the ability to try and defend those tier 3s. And Arkosh, even with sort of Aegis and Cheese here, are... Showing a little bit of respect. They know if they push forward, Felt do still technically have the means uh, to punish them with some of these teamfight abilities. So they don't want to get really too far ahead of themselves, but well, if you're Pale Horse, I don't know. You've got Aegis, you've got a BKB, you've got the Aghanim Scepter as well, so that Enrage literally cannot be sort of kept out of his reach. And that's just going to give him the confidence he needs to push his way forward. The Glyph will be popped now by Felt, so they're going to try to hold on for as long as they can and really... At this point, defending the tower is nice, but this is really more about getting more time for Tay. They need that Luna to sort of finish off this item. The Daedalus is what he sort of queued up here for that Luna, so really can't afford to go back until he's got that completed. But at this point, Arkosh are realizing that the Luna is trying to farm up something else around the map, so they're going to go in for the fight. Bayana Skatsi will be taken down. They're in onto that top lane of Rax now and felt just sort of scrambling. They need to try and do something here. They can't afford to let this go without a fight, but the Searing Chains oh, connect no. on a two. Pale Horse coming in. That Sandy's Eclipse will do almost nothing as Yellow Flash will go down. Pale Horse is potentially going to die here to that tower shot, but he's actually going to stay alive, and now his teammates are pushing in looking for the fight. Canis Vulpus, though, too far forward. He's going to get hit up by the Eclipse. Will be taken down. Zor, meanwhile, does fall in that fight, immediately buying back, and Arkosh may have gone a bit too far forward here. Gremlo's dropping low. Pale Horse is going to get back up thanks to that Aegis, but his teammate really is in no position to fight, and he will be taken down. So... They're going to be able to finish off one kill. Tay is now back in. The Daedalus oh, is at the ready. The Pale Horse trying to TP away. Can they get the damage? No, they cannot. They were so, so close. If they got maybe one or two more crits off of the Daedalus, uh, they might have been able to find that. But it looks like Pale Horse is going to be forced to fall back. If you're Arkosh, well, I mean, mission accomplished to a certain extent, right? You got the Tier 3. You got the Melee Racks. You forced out even more buybacks. So 
The lineup for Felt is still not in a solid position, but now uh, Owie could be in some trouble here. He is trying to dish out as much damage as he can onto Zorn. At this point, the Timber... The Timber's actually going to fall back. He's the one retreating from a 1v1 with the Enchantress. Never really a great sign, but... I don't know. If you're Felt, it could have been worse. I know that's really not a great Consolation Prize here, but it's going to have to do for the time being. But right now, uh, they need to keep Zora safe. He just fought back. They can't afford to lose him again, and it looks like the Astral will do the job there. But things are getting so insanely dangerous for Felt. They really, at this point, have to know it's only going to be one or two more teamfight attempts at the most. If they can't turn this around, then that could just be the game for them. As Crow looking to jump in. Koyanis Kasi will be taken down, but Crow should be falling in exchange here. Yeah. Yeah. Goes in for it, able to find a kill onto the Wyvern, although, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure that one was worth it. Your Wyvern's back up in 30, whereas Crow is dead for 80 seconds, so he's going to be on the sidelines for quite some time for a kill that really was not worth a lot. The Wyvern is the lowest net worth hero in the game. Yeah, well, and... Yeah. Okay. Aeon Disc is going to sort of he's save him run. for now. BKB popped. He wants the fight. He doesn't want to leave. Okay, jumping in onto Justice, but there's going to be that defensive Astral, but now here comes Pale Horse as well. Another Astral actually coming in to hit him, but at this point I don't know if it's going to be enough. Justice will still fall in Yellow Flash. He's got to pop the BKB just to fall back. Now he's looking for the TP home, realizing Kane's focus is directly on top of him, and he will be able to make it back to the fountain in time. And look, you just see the spam, the uh, the slam coming in from the Thunderhive. Wasn't enough damage, but it's so oppressive, this overwhelming blink. There's not much they can do about this, and I think they need to take back in the base. But again, he's just mode creep cut. He's trying to get as much farm as he can. And his teammates, I mean, they've got a lot of defensive tools, but... I just, I don't know if they can really hold the line without the Luna. That's just too much of their damage output as Gremlo, okay. In for the Burrow, connecting onto two. Cold Embrace is going to buy some time for the Wyvern. A defensive Astral even comes out. Yellow Flash throws out the Sandy's Eclipse for almost no damage there. And the Wyvern still does end up getting taken down. Now Pale Horse wants into the fight, but Tay's able to pop, uh, pop the BKB. So he's alive for now, but Kane is focused and Gremlo in onto the real target. They've taken down that OD. Yellow Flash is out of the fight once again. And at this point, Felt really starting to run out of gas here. They only have buybacks on the Wyvern and the Luna. So, I don't know. They're giving it everything they've got here trying to hold the line. It just doesn't feel like... They're doing enough to really push Arkosh back, and as you can see, Pale Horse, he just doesn't care. Doesn't even have the Aegis anymore, but he doesn't really need it. He's just going to continue pushing, take, and hit him up with the Lucent Beam occasionally, but not often enough to really stop this. But now with Zor sort of healed up and back in, maybe they now have that sort of creep, uh, creep wave clearing ability that's going to actually force Arkosh to retreat. And you saw in the team fight, Pale Horse, he got the overwhelming blink onto Tay, and you just immediately have to pop your BKB. It's so crippling you can't do anything you're just slowed for so long and you will just die to this ursa there's nothing you can do about it i would be pretty doubtful if arkash want to wait for that fourth roche i think they're going to keep the pressure on try and force felt to make a mistake but at the same time tay he is finishing his items he's got a full butterfly now he's going to be that little bit harder to kill in owie do they have enough damage they're gonna give it a go but I don't know. With those Nature's Attendants, he's not getting really taken down all that quickly. And now, yep, that's a problem. Pale Horse and Canis Vulpus jumping in on the back line. They take down the Wyvern once again. That is going to force out a buyback, but that was one of just two that were remaining on that felt side. The only other is in the hands of Tay, and, well, it's not going great so far. Justice gets taken down. He actually just got his money back for his own buyback, so I uh, misspoke earlier. Justice is back in. Winter's Curse, meanwhile, coming out from Kuyanis Katsi, so they're going to try and turn this one around, but the damage really just is not there. There it is, though. Tay's going to get himself involved. Able to take down one. But, well, Kanis Vulpus immediately buying back. They see their opportunity to push in, and they will be able to take it. Luna will be finished off. Yellow Flash, Kamianikoski, and Zor just trying to fall back into their base right now, but they can't make it away. He is going to get hit up by the LSA, but... Well, defensive Astral was not going to be enough to save him. Yellow Flash falls, Zor dead as well, and now the Wyvern is the last man standing. He's not going to be standing for very long. The GG will be called, and Kanis Vulpus is going to be able to pad the stats a little bit there with one final kill as we will be seeing Arkosh taking the first match of this best of three. Just well executed by their lineup. Incredible stuff. Yeah, and at the end of it, yeah, of course, the thanks for waiting coming out uh, from Canis Volpus, but yeah, they just had so many more resources. They had all of the time in the world. Alley 2000, 5 and 27. He just burned a hole in those side lanes, just farming up, getting those towers that his teammates 
couldn't really ever kill on their own but I think felt really underestimated sort of the weaknesses of that OD. And you, you got to last pick your Winter Wyvern in that phase. You had first pick, you were able to counter pick pretty much whatever. And I really don't think they were ready for how bad a game Yellow Flash was really going to get. And of course, we saw the matchup, even though you counter picked him in lane, counter picks in the mid lane don't really matter all too much in the scheme of things because once those team fights eventually broke out every single time he tried to get that meter hammer off he would get interrupted he would get it off and then immediately get stunned and focused down by other heroes there are just too many heroes to get on top of that od and i think felt really underestimated sort of what was going to happen to this od in those team fights even for the four five where you were able to pick up that winter wyvern in the last phase which of course should never happen you're pairing it up with the lion so if you ever skimp out on that execution you're going to fall flat you're going to have a hard time and you don't have that extra lockdown coming in from your offlaner i think felt just had a much more difficult draft to pull off where arkosh they ran at you they got every single roche every 10 minutes it just felt super easy for them mm -hmm. and we mentioned in the draft the fact that arkosh's ability to run at them was really going to leave them needing to definitively win team fights in order to then take objectives off the back of it that was sort of our caveat to this lineup but uh, it worked to perfection. They pushed for the fights early. They won those fights, as we said, pretty definitively. And at that point, they can take control of the map. Yellow Flash, as you said, did not have a fun time. He and Tay really didn't have uh, safe places to farm up any time that they wanted to go anywhere to try and farm. You saw Arkosh maybe not going all in for those kills, but at least sort of rotating one or two heroes over to just sort of nudge that opposing hero away from those farming opportunities. So, felt just really didn't quite put it together. On paper, this draft looked okay. We were sort of talking about the bright spots for it, talking about the potential uh, matchups that the OD might have had, but in terms of the actual execution, as you were mentioning, they just fall so flat while Arkosh were really firing on all cylinders. Yeah, and I think now, if you're felt, get some more active heroes, feel a little bit better, because really, it was kind of just a working. And the idea that felt have with their draft, right, is... We stick the timber in front of the Luna, we get the Luna to do things to hit. And I don't think they ever made that sort of decisive move where, okay, we're going to give up a tower, but we're going to get a tower. Or we're going to take this team fight, but we're going to have Tay fi or farming on the other side of the map. It felt like Felt really were all hands on deck and constantly responding to Arkosh's pressure. And that's never a game that you want to play. If you're constantly responding to your enemy's moves, you're always going to be behind the eight ball. And I think that was pretty indicative of what Felt kind of had going for them in this game. So hopefully they can twi or, uh, swap things around in game two. They are going to have to. Game one does not quite go their way, but they at least have one more shot at redemption here. We are going to be moving into game two relatively quickly. Now that we actually have all 10 players, we shouldn't really have the same delay that we saw for game number one. So we'll see if Arkosh can pull off a 2-0 sweep or if Felt are going to be able to sort of fight their way back into this one. Try and push this to a full three games. For now, though, we are going to be hopping into a bit of a break. So stick around and we'll be bringing game two your way in just a couple of minutes.